Hello YouTube fans and everybody else who doesn't know who I am. Uh, my name is Josh and I like to edit. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make video game footage look more cinematic and realistic. I've noticed a lot of videos online teach you how to make films more cinematic, your videos more cinematic, more like movies, like this, like that. And a lot of them have a lot of good information, but almost all of them are missing something critical inside there. Somebody has just a little bit of information that makes it look just a little bit more, but doesn't explain upon it. So when you try it yourself, it most likely will turn out bad. So I'm going to go from the ground up on how to make it look more cinematic. Uh, first things first, you got to have the basics. Uh, specifically for video games, you want to have a good capture card. I myself have a very good one. It is the Blackmagic Intensity Pro. It records in 1080p and 60 frames per second, which works perfectly for everything I do. Um, you want to really have a capture card that records in at least 60 frames per second. Uh, 30 will work, but half of this stuff won't apply to you if you have 30 frames per second. Um, you can still make something look cinematic, it's just it, it won't look as clean. So if you got a good capture card, you can move on to the next step. It is cinematic bars. Cinematic bars are the black bars that go across the top and the bottom of the video, making it look more wide, but more dramatic at the same time. So I have a couple videos here. Uh, clips, equal clips to compare back and forth. One I'm not going to touch, the other one I'm going to mess with completely. And just to show you the comparison of what it looks like regular to what we're doing. I also got a Modern Warfare one over here, and for the same concept. It's just Modern Warfare has is a little bit different because it produces in 60 frames per second when Halo Reach produces in 30 frames per second. Making Reach a little bit more tricky to look cinematic, but I'm still here to show you that. So what we're going to start doing is the cinematic bars. Uh, the perfect ratio for the cinematic bars movie styles is 235. I'll do it and I'll, you can match it on yours just by putting it side by side. So I have it right here preset that I made and put it on there, bam. Cinematic bars looking better already. Let's close that. Third step what we're going to do is cinematic corners. Now here's what took me the longest time to have, even figure out. I still have, I have two versions of it too because you have to have different versions. If you have one version for lighter, brighter, you know, lighting in the game, um, that won't work as well in darker lighting in any games. You won't see it that well. So you have to have one that's more darker corners in darker environments, lighter corners in brighter environments. Makes perfect sense. But if you don't know what that is, it's the darkened corners around a film that makes it look like, it makes you focus on the middle of the film more than um, the entire film's entity, the whole thing around it. So it makes anything look a lot better. So let me go ahead and apply that. First thing I do is open up a new video track and then I insert elliptical transparent to black is what I used initially. Um, I'm gonna, I already made a preset for it, so I'm going to show you the preset, and I'll even show you the specs of it too. So, drag it down above. Uh, well, let me show you right here first on this one, since it's not messing with the film. Let's go ahead and look. It is now dark in the corners. So, looking at it now, flipping it back and forth, you see the darkened corners. That's part one of this. It's subtle, but people notice it, is the oval that it's producing. The oval of untouched film and we have the darkened corners. That oval is very noticeable. What I figured out is that I want to blur it to blend it in there. And that's one half of what we're going to be doing right now. So what I went ahead and did is make a video preset for blurring the cinematic corners and that's with the new blue effects that I purchased for Vegas and these are amazing. If you don't have them they help a lot and it literally adds so many hundreds and hundreds of effects. Um, so I definitely recommend getting that because it helps out in this scenario. If you don't have it, you can still use this one right here, Gaussian Blur, Gaussian, Gaussian, whatever, however we're going to say it. You can still use that one as well. But it doesn't work as well as the new blue effects 
which the one I use for it is zoom blur. So looking at it right now, I have two presets as you see. We have for bright lighting, for dark lighting. So I'll dr go ahead and since this is outside sunshine and it's obviously bright lighting, drag and drop on the clip. Didn't see much happen, but it's very subtle, but it made it look just a little bit better. So now that I flip it back and forth, you don't see that oval anymore, or you barely do. Which works when you have an active video playing, you won't be noticing that oval at this point. So that's why I have it here. So let's go ahead and move on to bringing it over to our clip that we're going to be editing. Bring it on over. Now we have cinematic bars and the corners. But if you haven't noticed, we, we added the cinematic bars, which the darkened corners are still to the ratio as if the bars weren't there. So what I had to do again for part three of this was squish it with the deform plugin. Go ahead and click deform, and you want to compress it to the 235 ratio. So just the, the cinematic corners though. So I go ahead and drag and drop there. And the perfect one, is, the perfect amount, of course, is 0 0.244. It squishes the corners to fit right in here nicely. Uh, if you can't already tell, the video is looking a lot better. So let me go ahead and flip it on and off. You see, it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. And that's all, you know, making something look perfect is. Subtle things that make a big difference. So there we go, added that. So this is the deform amount you want to use, 0 0.244. Don't change anything else, it's all good. And for the zoom blur, for the bright lighting, I zoom at 75, keep the position at 0, and blend at 60. Yeah, and as for the cinematic corners from the elliptical one, I went ahead and placed my one marker here, two marker in the corner at the top right. One, I keep it as completely transparent. Two, I got it about halfway around that area. So that's what you want to change it from the original all the way to that one. Look at it and use it black, of course, for shading. So after we got that done, your film will look like this. It looks a lot better than this. Cinematic bars, cinematic corners, just it looks better. Subtle, but better. So let's go ahead and start adding uh, effects into this. Again, I used a Sony New Blue effect called Film Look. It's, it comes with a bunch of presets, but a bunch of them I would never even use originally, like that. Who used that? Um, so I made a couple myself. In fact, I made five. Um, first off, we have the standard look, which adds a lot of definition to it, brightens it up just a tad bit, and crushes the black color in the area while still brightening it up, making it look more appealing to the eye. So right now, I'm going to be using my gloomy dark one for this. Since it's in a bright area, dark kind of averages out in the middle pretty nicely. So I'll use the gloomy dark one I made, drag and drop, and you notice the effect. So go ahead and tell me what that looks like in the comments if you want. That'd be cool. Um, but we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you back and forth what it looks like without and with. So this is without anything. This is with that as well. And just go ahead and compare that for you back and forth. Tell me what it looks like. It's looking pretty nice so far. I think so. Um, so the film look comes standard. This is what the film look looks like reset to none. Everything zero, zeroed out, everything zeroed, and the tint's at white. Doesn't add anything to the film at all. Um, what tint is, right here, it basically sets the mood. Um, the brighter the color, the lighter the mood. Let's say I want yellow, and when I add that tint up, you'll notice it turns yellow. So this is where you guys start evening it out. Um, you don't want it to look like that, that'll look like shit. So. I probably keep it, I don't go more than 15 uh, for brighter colors, so probably for the brightest colors I'd go around 10 is what I usually go at. It just adds kind of a kind of a pop to it, more yellowish. We're, this is going to be like sun beating down yellow. Saturation right next to here, I'll show you what it does. Um, if you 
put the saturation up to, like up positive it really bleeds all the colors in the clip it just bleeds them uh, it doesn't look good when you have it too high and same thing with a reverse if you start going the other way it kind of just dulls the colors out making it look a little bit better so if you have it at zero I recommend putting it down to at least negative 5 to negative 10 it's your call it's dulling out the colors but let's go with just negative 5 for quick tutorial purposes so we got negative 5 and saturation we have negative 5 saturation and 10 tint with a pure yellow color um, brightness I really don't mess with that one in this air in sense area because it really has nothing to do other than making the film look too bright and or not bright enough so what I do is keep it at zero and contrast and gamma this is where you really gotta mix the two just right because that's what makes the film look um, a lot better it really just darkens and brightens up the film in a way that makes it look a lot better than brightening it per se so what we can go ahead and do is I'll show you what the contrast does if you bring the contrast positive it'll start darkening the film negative will start brightening the film too much you don't ever want to go too negative with it but the thing about gamma is once you add gamma in there it will darken the film as well in a sense but not in, not as much but it darkens it in a different way than contrast does so my gamma it really adds definition more than anything by darkening the film so let's go ahead and just for quick tutorial purposes let's keep it at you know 40 see how the film's pretty dark contrast we can keep it at zero but let's make it look a little bit better by probably putting a negative to brighten it just a little bit to help balance out the gamma don't want to do it too much but let's say negative 20 negative 21.2 how does that look looks pretty good to me comparing this to the one we just made to the regular I like it a lot better tell me what you think in the comments that'd be cool so now we got diffusion or diffusion however you want to pronounce it I live in Texas so I'll just say diffusion um, it really makes the brightest of the bright colors pop out a little bit more it won't adjust anything darkening most most of the time unless you put a lot of it so let's go ahead and just do it dramatically see what it does see how it makes that all the bright colors kind of pop out yeah the higher the diffusion sometimes the better it really depends on the scene and the lighting so for this one I mean I kinda like a hundred but we'll drop it down because it makes the rocket launcher stand out look a little more realistic that looks good let's go with 50 50 looks good to me so guess what we just made a good little afternoon film effect um, so you guys can take from this I mean it was just a little example if you like it you can copy it but I really recommend adjusting it yourself now that you know what each knob does making it look good it took me a very long time to get these things where they're supposed to be I wouldn't expect to get it right the first time because I for sure did not so we'll keep it like this um, we'll go ahead and use that I don't mind using that at all the test one we just made so that's one of the third things you want to add next thing is um, camera movements stationary shots do well sometimes but the only time you really want to use a stationary shot is when you have two people talking back and forth and even then you still want to add a little bit of camera movement in video games the theater mode doesn't add camera movement unless you literally move the thumbstick yourself and try to add artificial camera movement in a way um, so we have a plug-in in again new blue that adds better artificial camera movement so let's go ahead and take a look at that then the one is going to be new blue active camera I made a couple presets again for it it already has a lot in here we got the stumbling drunk subtle moves train ride dirt road jackhammer a bunch of these which you really wouldn't use because some of them are just way too much camera movement so you kinda gotta adjust this one yourself as well so let's go ahead and do the reset to none and show you what each one does dropping it specifically on the track 
because sometimes I don't know if you guys know this, but if you drop drag and drop a effect onto the timeline, it will affect the timeline. It'll affect all the videos in that timeline. But there's a difference. Look at the cinematic bars. They start fucking up pretty bad. And so it starts making the movie look a lot shittier. So you want to undo that. And if you drag and drop the effect into the clip itself, it doesn't mess with the cinematic bars at all. So that's the best thing right there. So let's go ahead and look at that real fast. Active camera. Here, here are all the knobs we have. We have vertical right here. Horizontal, rotation, crop, blur, hold, jitter, rate. Um, these two added together, rate and jitter, is how much it shakes and how frequently it shakes. How, how like how much it drags left and then jitters right real quick. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you. I'll just do a loop. But once you start rendering with this much effects added into your video, it'll be very laggy. So even my computer that I built myself, I do got to turn it down. A notch so we can look at it properly. So I'm going draft half, so don't mind the quality for right now. Let's go ahead and just do a. Let's go ahead and do a five second, oh, four seconds. Four second clip that's on loop. So, start off, you have to have these up here first before these take any effect of it. Top row has to be messed with before bottom row is messed with, or you won't see anything different. So, horizontal. Add it right here. You don't want to add too much, though. Horizontal moves the camera left and right. Make it, it's exactly what it does right there. I usually keep that around zero vertical. Um, that's what moves the camera up and down. It's more like zooming in, in a way. Rotation, obviously, it moves rotation. Crop. This is basically zooming in the most. Cropping the video, zooming in at all. So, just in case you have the rotation, you want, to, you know, you don't want to see the cinematic bars looking like that. You would crop it to. So now the film's turned, but still looking good in a way. I mean, that looks not that doesn't look too bad itself. But then we start adding rate and jitter. See it shaking around. I know it's laggy too. Sorry about that. But basically, this adds a lot more cinematic effects as well. Jitter, how much, how rapidly it shakes for the rate. I mean, these are just something you really got to mess with. So we'll go ahead and cut it short there, because this can go on forever. And I'm going to show you what the one I currently use is, which is Action Spartan Shot, which is very subtle movements, but looks good in an action scene like this one. So these are the numbers if you wanted to copy those down as well. Horizontal 10, Vertical 10, Rotation 4, Crop 34, Rate 67, Jitter 54, Hold 34, Blur 21. Go ahead and get those copied down, and we'll see that later in this video. Definitely going to see all these put together. So now, here we go. I'm going to start explaining, you know, because now that we got our film done, it looks very nice compared, again, to the original. This is what it looks like, zoomed in a little bit as well, compared to the original. The original looks good, don't get me wrong, but obviously it's a game, and I see that games usually add a lot more brightness for more, like, easier for people to see in a way, I'm guessing, but that's why you gotta darken them up most of the time, make them look a little bit better. But, there we go. So we're kind of done on that area. Everything, more or less, is personalizable by you. You can copy mine all you want, but you'll never gain any more skill by just copying down numbers. You really gotta mess with them yourself. Alright, so this concludes the first part of the tutorial. Um, it is very long, that's why I wanted to make it in two separate parts, so you guys didn't have to sit through a 45 minute long video. Um, so at the very top half, you can click there for the second part, 
and it just finishes off this entire two-part uh, tutorial. Uh, on the bottom left, you can click that section to see my personal rendering settings, which I don't show in this video, because I already made another video for that, because it takes about 15 minutes long to see. Um, and the bottom right, you can click there to subscribe and see all of my other videos. So again, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys learned a lot, and be sure to click part two to finish learning everything there is to know about making a game look more cinematic.